Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Nady, and today we're doing a full face of new makeup. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have, please cast that away because this is a channel of positive energy, okay? Thank you. Oh my goodness, how is everyone today? It is windy as hell out. Like I let Ron out and he was so scared of the wind that he just had to do a quick pee and came right back in. Isn't that right, little baby? You wanna say hello? I think you wanna say hello. Oh God, I love you so much. So I hope wherever everybody's at in the world today, you are doing fabulous. Ron, like usual, was sleeping and he just wants to go back to my big yellow chair and sleep over there. He needs some air time. He's too handsome not to show. Oh God. I love you so much. A little whisker in my tongue. All right, Ron, you can go back to sleep. Let me just get your juices all over my skin. Oh, God. Love juices. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. That sounds gross. All right, go on, baby. Oh, now you're going to sit there. You want to come back up? Honestly, it feels so fucking good to be back filming. I took a little bit of time off because my energy has been like all over the place. One day I'll be like, yes. And then the next day I'll be like, no. Today was definitely one of those no days. But after a little boost of pre-workout, I feel fine. Ron needs a little bit of pre-workout. God, oh my god, he's falling asleep right here. Oh god, oh, oh. boop to snoots. Oh, I think it's safe to say that Ron is probably all of us right now. I don't think very many people are like feeling spritey and youthful at the moment. Anyways, I asked my family what kinds of videos they want to see because I've not been wanting to do like reviews on here, at least in the meantime. It just feels like a really weird ass time in the world right now. A lot of people are short on money. And so I'm trying to review as few products as possible. But today's video, I've actually wanted to do one of these for a long time, but I never order like multiple products to do a full Face of new things with. It just isn't cost efficient for me. But I actually got some drugstore foundations like a month ago to review and I just never did. And then I also ordered a couple concealers to review and I just never did that either. And then a few things were also gifted to me either from the PR company or somebody sent them to me. So I think it's about time that we do one of these. We're gonna chill so that our mind is out the rest of the world and we can just spend a few fucking minutes in an alternate world. A world where we are all hugging and holding hands and maybe a few little sucky suckies here and there. <laughs> all right, so let's get into this shall we? Hold on. Everything is right over here. <laughs> okay. I don't really remember everything that I have. There's just like a big fucking pile of stuff right here. So I'll pull from it as we need it. But first I need to do a little skincare. I just got out of the shower. My skin is nice and hydrated, but still a little dry feeling. Normally I go in with the KPS drops, which are very expensive, but so fucking good. But I've used them quite a bit. So we need to try something new. Here is a Good Molecules Super Peptide Serum. I think Beautylish or Beauty Bay scent me this or maybe it was a representative from good molecules either way they sent me a nice big bundle of products and i'm just now trying them they seem really good so let's start with this super peptide serum sounds like something a cheerleading squad would say super peppy this says apply one drop in the morning and at night let absorb for 30 seconds suitable for daily use one drop that's it maybe we'll do like one little splooshy on all the parts of my face so here 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 and there it literally was gone before i even rubbed it in we're gonna go in with a little bit more because one drop is not cutting and I mean, if you were given one drop out of something, would you be satisfied? No. Yes, that is a sexual reference. Maybe we should get you zoomed in a little bit more, shall we? Right here. Ooh, hi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that works. Well, that left my face feeling smooth, a little bit tacky, not moisturized. It still does feel a little bit on the dry side. So hopefully this adds something to my skin because I do know from experience that if my skin is dried, the rest of the makeup is going to look like shit. So if this doesn't add anything to my skin, I might go in with another little oil on top of this that I have used. I don't think I've ever used this before. I mean, I have a couple of them because I'm a huge Gerard Cosmetics fan, but I can't remember using it. If I have in a video, I apologize, but I don't remember ever trying it. Come on, baby. My God, this is the hardest I've ever had to work to get cream out. <laughs> Come on. Oh, fuck. Did you see that? <laughs> She's a squirter. Oh my, it is very illuminated. We are gonna be glowy. Oh, fuck. Let's just apply a little all over there before I get the rest of it on my pants. I wonder if I did use this before because I think I made like a Tin Man joke back then. Either way, I don't really mind because it did add a good bit of moisture to my skin. It feels like we are just coming out of winters here in the Michigans. And I have never, ever really had dry skin before except for this year. And so it's still 
little dry and this did add some nice glowiness to my skin. Normally I don't put anything glowy underneath my foundation because I get oily, but now I don't really have that problem. I have no idea how much you can see on camera, but in person, I can really see it. Like I have a just fucked look without the fucked hair. I mean, <laughs> my do is nice today. But I could totally see this being like a nice highlighter for somebody. I don't know that I'd wear this on its own, at least not this much, but not something that I mind if I'm gonna be putting a matte foundation over it. It just gives it a little bit of a dewy look. Almost like I'm pregnant, but the only thing I'm pregnant with is a fucking food baby. And for foundation, I have a couple different Milani ones to choose from. This is the Screen Queen, and I have a 270 and 210, neither of which are probably gonna be my color, but I'm kind of leaning towards this one. I do have more of a pinky undertone, and this is a little bit on the yellow side, but I'd rather be a little bit darker and yellow than too pale and yellow. So let's try this, and I'm gonna apply it with a little poof poof. I used to do everything with wet sponges, and I loved it, but then once these re-entered my life after reviewing the Titty Booty Blenders, I cannot put these away. Like, I will never go back to a brush or a sponge. And if I do go back to one, eh, whatever. Oh my gosh, the more that I look at this, the more yellow it looks. Oh, I don't know if this is good. Actually, you know what? Why don't I just fucking mix them? I own them. They are way past the point of return, so I'm gonna take one squirt of each and put it on a little poof poof. Ready? I can feel ya. I can feel it. Eh, maybe I can't. Words that, unfortunately, I've said before. Oh my god, what is up with pumps today? All right, so there it is. It's actually a pretty thick consistency. Not bad. I kind of like it a little bit thick, <laughs> but I really do like thick foundations because they don't slide off the tool that you're using them with. And I feel like the applicators aren't able to soak as much product up. I don't know. Maybe that could totally not be true, but it's just how I feel. I don't know. We'll apply this. And if I need more coverage, then I might just go in with the darker one. The fuck is my mirror? All right, here we go, babies. I can't even remember the last time I used a Milani foundation. I think the only time I used one was when I was doing a Tati made me buy it, I think. And that is definitely not enough to cover my whole face. However, it does still look pretty. Like it did offer a little bit of coverage and it really did help even out that shimmer that the BB cream had. And that's with two pumps. I don't mind that. Like I think it looks really, really good and nice and natural, but I definitely do want more. So I'm gonna go in with the deeper shade. So in total, this will be four pumps on my face. And I suppose I should have looked to see if this is even buildable or what kind of coverage it offers. This says it is luminous natural skin finish. Okay, so I didn't need that BB cream, but we used it anyways. It's buildable light to medium coverage and it's long wear. So I'm probably not gonna go in with another pump after this because if we're only able to get medium coverage, I ain't gonna try to get full coverage. We're gonna have full fucking cake face at that point. My God, cake sounds so good. Who am I? Honestly, I am not like a sweets person, but since this whole quarantine thing, oh my God. I finally broke down and ordered a treadmill and I ordered these things that go on your abs and like work your abs without actually having to work because lazy bitch. Actually, I'm not being lazy. I'm taking this whole quarantine time to like better myself and do all the things that I'd wanted to do. I'm gonna take some more photography courses because I actually used to be a high fashion photographer and I've been out of the game for a couple years now. So I wanna see what new tips and tricks they have. And I'm also stretching like a bitch every night because I really wanna become more flexible. I'm trying to learn a new language and I'm also working on skincare formulas and more highlighter formulas. So this bitch is busy, but really I feel like this is such a good opportunity for people to just chill and relax, get healthy, boost their immune system. And if you don't wanna learn a new language or be able to touch your toes to the back of your head, that's okay, just chill. So many people are like busy bitches who are constantly working. And so take this time to relax and rest up. All right, so here is a total of four pumps. This actually looks really fucking good, like really good. I'm talking like Dior backstage good. However, I do still see a little bit of redness around here. So I'm kind of tempted to go in with one more little pump. I can't really tell that there's anything on my skin. Like it looks great. Oh my God, I'm so fucking hot. I have to go put shorts on. I'll be right back. Oh damn, I am so sorry. I am sweating ass over here. It was so warm out yesterday. So I turned my heat off. It was like 70 fucking degrees and now it's 30 degrees. And I turned my heat back on and now it's fucking sauna in here. Anyways, I'm going in with one more little squirt and I'm just gonna apply it wherever I need it, mainly around my red areas, which is right here and down here. And even with the five pumps, 
I think this looks great. It looks natural on the skin. I can't even tell that I'm wearing anything. It is, though, getting a little bit caught up in my mustachio and my beard, which is to be expected with a cream formula, so I'm not that surprised. I know I said I liked creams, but one of the benefits of using a thinner formula is if you have, like, peach fuzz on your face or stubble like me, it can blend in between the little fuzzies and make the fact that you're wearing makeup a little bit less noticeable. But then the downside is that a lot might get soaked up into this, so you just have to kind of, like, pick and choose your little battles. But I think this looks stunning. I'm so ashamed that I didn't do like a full ass review of this stuff because this is definitely worth it. Not gonna be like too dramatic here, but this is probably my new favorite drugstore foundation. I'm gonna try my best to get it in my actual color, but this really isn't that bad. Maybe I should blend a little down my pale ass neck, aka my gullet. For Ken Squealer, I'm very torn on what we should use today because I've heard really, really good things about both of these. We have the Vanish Hourglass Concealer and the Dior Forever Skin Corrector. Oh, like I'm so tempted to try the Dior one because the Dior backstage is just like an orgasm on the face in the best way possible. It doesn't sound good. But then I really, really like a lot of Hourglass's products. So uh, do we want to do like one on one side and the other? No, because they're not the same color. I guess let's first see what we're dealing with color wise. But I think so with the Dior one. Oh my God. God, fancy as fuck packaging. Well, now I'm gonna go based off the packaging on what one we should use. Actually, the hourglass does look a tiny bit more yellow, so we're gonna go in with a peachier one. Trust a bitch, though, I will use this in an upcoming video and we can test it out there. But today we are going to use the Forever Skin Correct in the shade six months. No, that's not right. In the shade 3C Cool. It feels kind of like glass, but it's acrylic plastic. It's got a really nice weight to it. The locking cap actually locks and snaps into place. Let's see what the doe foot looks like. Okay, so it's kind of like a tart shippy tippy esque doe foot. Doesn't have any fragrance to it, I don't think. It just smells like concealer mixed with a little bit of paint. So that's always a good sign. And what the fuck did I do with my mirror? Okay, so let's start with a few little droppies here and there. Oh my, this might actually be a little bit too dark. Ooh, shit on me. That sucks. We'll still try it though. I usually like to bring a little bit of concealer right down here just to help conceal the laugh lines, I guess you'd call those, but also to further new neutralize that redness I have going on. I could have used like an actual color corrector, but eh. I personally don't mind when like your actual skin shows through your makeup, unless you're doing wedding makeup or something where it needs to be like perfection. If I'm doing this kind of makeup, I don't really care if you can see like a little acne showing through or some redness, whatever. We're all human. We have skin. It's blending out very easily. Not the best job at like concealing, although it does look pretty good, but that's also because of these lights. But I can tell close up that you can still see some of the purple under there. So maybe we'll go in with a few drops more. The color actually isn't that bad. I usually like to go a little bit more dramatic when I'm highlighting under my eyes, but this works for today. And I'm not sure if it's because I didn't add a whole lot of moisture to my face like I usually do before makeup, but it does look a tiny bit dry underneath my eyes. There we go, we're a little bit closer. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see under my eyes I don't think it looks bad. It's just compared to the Dior Backstage Foundation. I don't know that this is like a comparable product. Maybe it would be better with that foundation, but over this one, I don't think it's anything special, but I don't think it's bad. I think I actually wanna use another little bitty drop right under here just to see how well it covers. And um, what do we think? I actually like this even more with the extra coverage, but still the slightest bit dry. Like you can still see a little bit of purple under there, but I don't think even concrete would cover that up. However, the more that I'm patting this in, even after it's dry, it's getting kind of like an airbrushed look and it's taking away that dryness. It's almost turning like to a powder. Oh my, I don't know. What do y'all think? Do we like this concealer? Like I can still see right there a whole lot of purple and I did apply quite a bit of concealer so you'd think that, you know, there wouldn't be purple there, but it's not awful. I'm just not sold that it's worth the Dior price. I don't even remember how much this was. I'm gonna say probably like $40. But the more that I look at my face and the more that I tap it in, the more I'm liking everything. Like everything is marrying together really well. Like these bitches are gonna have some beautiful ass babies, damn it. Also 10 out of 10 positive that there's parts of my face that I didn't apply any product to. So if you see a little bald patch like missing foundation, just ignore it. And I am an extremely creasy bitch, especially under my 
my eyes. So I'm going to go in with a powder that I have used, but I don't think I've used it alone. And that is the Hlora Mercier Brightening Powder, I think. Yes, secret brightening powder for under the eyes. I don't know if you're really supposed to set your makeup with this, but I'm going to. Especially because I feel like I could use a little bit more highlighting under there. Ooh, damn. Hopefully that isn't going to make me look a little bit ashy under the eyes. We'll see. I know I've used this before, but I usually apply it over the setting powder, which I'm sure is totally incorrect, but whatever. I love Laura Mercier so much, but their normal powder really, really dries my under eyes out. And so I'll probably start using it again here in the summer, but the whole winter, like, oh, I could not use it. So I'm just going to place it everywhere that I tried to highlight before. So down the nose, on the lip, and on the chin. And that did seem to set under my eyes pretty well. What if I said nothing and just left it like this and acted like everything was okay? Pretty sure I've probably done that before, but let's go ahead and dust it. Oh my god. God, what the hell happened to this brush? Do we see that? Speaking of just fucked hair, when I washed this, it must have dried weird. I, I, whatever, we're still gonna use it though. Oh God, it's soft. This is a Kabuki from Unique. Oh my gosh, back when I first started my channel, a fabulous woman sent me a whole bunch of Unique products. She was like the first person to send me stuff and I was so honored. She's such a sweetheart. And she was like, you know, if you sold this, you could have your own makeup company. And I was like, or I could actually have my own makeup company. So I don't really use any of the products anymore, but this brush has always been one of my all-time favorites. That was also the first ever like professional grade brush that I ever had. Okay, what do we think? I'm not sure that it really added a whole lot of brightening underneath my eyes, maybe a tiny bit. I really can't tell, but I do know that my under eyes look a little bit on the dry side now, even more than before, but not terrible. Let's go ahead and move on to the eyes. I ordered something from Morphe and it's been sitting in the corner for quite a while. <gasps> oh my gosh, I think I know what this is. This is the Jacqueline palette. Wait, did Jacqueline come out with another palette? Am I going crazy? I'm pretty sure she did like several months ago. Yes, Jacqueline Hill Volume Dose. Oh, she is fucking stunning. Like say what you want about her. She can take some good ass pictures. I'm not here to suck anybody's titty. In fact, I don't really know much of anything about Jacqueline other than she had some hairy lipsticks and a few good highlighters. But I know that people were raving about this palette, which is why I ordered it. <gasps> oh my God, this is beautiful. I guess I should probably show it to the cameras if you haven't seen this a billion times already. But some of the Morphe palettes, honestly, even though I'm not a Morphe bitch, like I do not have an affiliate code, probably never will. I actually really like some of their palettes. Like the James Charles palette, it's a good-ish kind of palette. And this one, I could really see myself reaching for a lot as well. It's got really bold pop and colors with a few nude shades in there. I never got the first Jaclyn palette, so I don't know how it compares to this. I think I have a fake one when I did the fake ass series, but this is cute. I like. Now I have to decide what kind of look I want to do. I googled looks that people have created with this palette and like everybody wants to use every fucking color in this palette. I want something a little more wearable. Like this person took two pinks, two purples, a gold, a yellow, an orange, a brown, a red, all in one look like that. That's fine, and that's something that I myself would normally do when reviewing a product, but today I want something wearable. I suppose we could do like a yellow and an orangey look. That's kind of spring-like. And I do not have any brand new eye primer, so I'm gonna go in with the one that I always use and I adore. This is the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas in the shade Medium One. I know I have a Gerard Cosmetics code, but I can never ever remember it to promote it. But even if I didn't, I'm still gonna be honest about this, and I think it is the bee's knees. Like, this primer is a game changer. Like, the other day we filmed a video Video with a blue blood palette and normally it's really splotchy for me and just kind of patchy and it still was to an extent but it was a million times better with this primer which speaks volumes like the products that you use as a base can really affect the overall look so I'm just gonna spread this all over both my eyeballs and this is a very versatile product you can put it on whatever kinds of balls you want but I like this one because it does offer a little bit of like a concealing aspect but also remains sticky but not like so tacky that you can't blend anything out the the only issue that I have with it is that it blends right in with my skin tone. So it can be a little bit difficult to see if I missed any spots. So I just make sure to get like all over my face. Paint me like a French model. And you don't need very much of this. Like this little guy is gonna last me till the next apocalypse. And lately I've been very, very much into halo eyes. So I think we're gonna do another one of those today, but I'm not gonna use any concealer because I've kind of been over like creating these extravagant looks that not everybody can do. Okay, so to start, I think I want yellow in the middle. So why don't 
don't we go ahead and apply that while this is still a little bit tacky, much like my jokes? And I don't know if Morphe palettes usually have the names on them. I don't think they do, at least not on several of the ones that I have, but I like that these are named. So uh, let's go in with some no joke. Once again, I lost my fucking mirror. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's apply that right here to the center and... <gasps> Ooh, she got some pigmentation to her. That is pretty. I'm just gonna like draw a line a little bit above my crease and go down all the way to my lashes. I'm gonna keep applying a little bit more to really get it saturated. I'm sure I'll go in with even more once we're a little bit more finished, but that's pretty. I am a sucker and a half for yellows. I love them so much, like yellow and purple. Oh, fuck me up, bitch. And this yellow is actually really, really good. Like I dipped in twice on each eye and that's not bad. I think maybe we'll start in the middle and kind of work our way in and out. So let's then go in with my man. That's a really, really pretty color too. It's like a neon coral. Love it. And I'm just going to diffuse the edges of the yellow out with that just right here in the inner and the outer corner. And then I'm also going to take that and just blend it ever so gently above that yellow right on the crease. And that builds up really nicely too. It kind of turns into like a hunter orange, which is not my jam. But today, because we're doing a sunset look. I could fuck with this ish. Now that I have it laid down with whatever's left on the brush, I'm just going to diffuse those edges and really try to blend and smoke it out. Mm, this is very easy to work with. I'm liking this. I've not seen a single damn review for this palette because I don't watch much YouTube. I don't know if other people hated it, but so far with the two colors that I've used, I'm in like. Oh my God, it's so fucking windy outside. I can hear my patio furniture moving around. Probably going to blow away and I'll see my neighbor using it next month. All right, bitches. Let's take it a little bit deeper, shall we? So let's go in with feeling myself. This is a little bit on the muted ashy side for an orange. I wish it were like a little bit brighter, but it's a tiny bit deeper. So we're going to go in with that. And I'm going to place that directly on the outer and inner corners, trying not to cover up what we just laid down. I want it to be diffused and have a nice transition from yellow to probably red. Oh, fuck. I just dropped my brush on my cheek. Damn it. Yeah, whatever. I'm just going to have a little orange liver spot right there. No biggie. But we'll take this and just gently sweep it in the eye socket right there. Once again, that is a terribly beautiful color. I dare say this shit is thickening. Actually, no, I don't dare say that. Wrong channel, welcome back. Let's, oh my God, I just spit everywhere. Ugh, normally I'm not even a spitter either. <laughs> oh God, there's a little bit of spittle on crazy. Get off of there. There isn't like a deep orange here, so I'm actually gonna do a little bit of mixing. I'm gonna go in with feeling myself, homeboy, and let's try some heart on. Oh, that's cute, heart on. <laughs> and I dipped in one time in each of those and it didn't really do that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take a little bit of that beautiful kind of ashy red heart on and just lightly dust that really, really close into the eye. I don't wanna lose that orange, but if you see a beautiful sunset, it often does have red in it. So why not incorporate a little bit of that? And then I'm gonna take a little bit more no joke right here on the center, which I honestly think should have been called no yoke, but that's just me. And then I really wanna try a little bit of this gold next to it right over the yellow, just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna take some on my finger and once again I just spit and it's fucking on my monitor. This is why people like me should not be out in public at this time. Anyway, so I'm gonna take that on my finger and just lightly tap over that yellow. I don't wanna cover the yellow because I think it's really pretty, but a little bit of shimmer definitely wouldn't hurt. I kinda wanna see what a little bit of living my best life would look like on the inner and outer corner as well. It does have a little bit of shimmer in it, so I don't want a whole lot, but it is a really pretty red color. Okay, just gave it a little bit of spice. Puppy loves it spicy. For the bottom, I'm just gonna start with a nice, clean, like lightish brown. Which one should we do? Actually, screw the light brown. We're gonna go back in with Homebody. Did I call that Homeboy earlier? I feel like I may have. Anyways, I'm gonna take this and sweep it all along the lower lash like usual. Nothing fancy here. I can tell that that primer really, really helped with this palette because there are a few little spots that I missed putting primer on and it's not sticking there at all, which tells me that this really does need some shit to stick to, which there's nothing wrong with that. It just means you need a primer. There there are palettes out there though that you don't need a primer with. Like they will stick all day, look fabulous, they won't move. But I've really yet to see a Morphe palette like that. Maybe they're out there, but not this one, at least not for me. And then I also wanna go in with a little bit of living my best life. And I'm gonna smoke that out right up against the lashes. I'm noticing that the little gold flecks that it has really don't wanna stick around. Oh my God, these gold flecks are basically my dad. But what's left is really, really pretty. It's kind of like a crimson deep red. And it really does blend out very easily. Then let's smoke that out a tiny bit with some of my man. Just 
to add a little bit of orangey something something like we have to the top lash. And a lot of people probably look at my looks and are like, you go way too fucking low with that on the lower lash. But I actually do that on purpose. I've noticed that when I keep things tight to the lower lash and I have my falsies and everything on, the lower bit just looks small. But then when I bring these colors down a little bit farther than I normally would, it really helps open my eyes up. So I know right now it might look a little bit ridiculous and I might look a tiny bit sick and zombie-like. But once lashes and mascara and liner is on, it always looks okay. And to finish up with the lower lash, I want a little bit of deepness right next to my lashes. So let's take Crazy. We haven't used that one yet. It's a really pretty like maroon color, like a deep wine. Oh, bitch, fucking love me some wine. With that, I'm just gonna blend it right in between the lashes so that it's nice and dark. If you know me, you know the bitch loves grungy glam. And so if I can do that, you know I will. But I wouldn't necessarily call this grungy glam because I am gonna put a liner on the top so it kind of helps even things out. Plus, I'm gonna take that orange brush that I used before and just blend that out even further so it's not as harsh. And there, see we have a nice little smoky under eye. And I do not have a new liner, so I'm gonna go in with my all-time favorite. This is Hank and Henry's Blickety Black. And I accidentally closed the cap on the little fibers. I don't know if you can see it, but it reminds me of that Cynthia doll from Rugrats with the hair going every fucking which way. Still a great product though. Also, I did not even see how crusty my dry ass lips look right now. I apologize. And then I did add some darkness to the lower lash as well as the upper lash, so my eyes are kind of getting closed. So to reopen them, I'm gonna go in with a nude liner and tight line the waterline. For brows, I don't really do much to them. I'd usually just use like a pencil and fill them in. So today I'm gonna try this cover girl in the shade Deep. This is Easy Breezy Brow volumizing gel. Okay, we'll see how that works. I rarely ever use gels in my brows because I just don't care enough to, but we'll try this today instead of a pencil. Here we go. Ooh, oh God, let me wipe some of that off. Huh, this is very interesting. I don't know if I prefer it over a pencil, but it is definitely deepening them up. Oh my God. God, I look like an Adams Family member. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna take a spoolie and blend that out a little bit because holy hell. And I probably applied it incorrectly because I am very unfamiliar with brow gels, but ooh, it's crispy feeling. But it did certainly make it kind of fluffy, didn't it? I don't mind it if you don't. I feel like I went from like trim and primmed brows to like bushman brows, but okay. Let's just take a consqueeler pencil and highlight under those brows a little bit. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and highlight the brow bone with some certified. Just gonna lightly press a little bit of that right there. Holy shit, that's highlighted. What the fuck? Then for mascara, again, I don't have a new product, so I'm going in with another all-time favorite from Hank and Henry. This is their double-ended, I don't know, duo something or the other. It's really good though, because it's got a little skinny mini on the end for the lower lash and then a thick bitch for the uppers. Then for lashes, the Makeup Institute was a very generous and sent me quite a few, and I'm torn between using either mannequin or vamp. I think I'll use vamp. And I feel like so many people are afraid of false lashes because they don't know how to apply them. They're uncomfortable, but if you do know how to apply them. They actually can be somewhat comfortable and you forget that they're there. What a lot of people don't know is that, oh my god, what the fuck is all over my scissors? Who the fuck was cutting with those? Probably me. Anyways, what a lot of people don't know is that you do have to trim them. Not the actual hair, you have to trim the outer and inner corners. Otherwise, they'll poke into your eyes, they'll be too long and give you like saggy, droopy eyes. But a mistake that a lot of people make is just taking them out of the carton and thinking that you can just directly apply them to the eyes. Wow, these are really nice fluffy lashes. Damn, you go Makeup Institute. So here's the inner corner. We'll start there. Do you see that extra little nubby that we have? I'm just going to cut that off because when I apply it with that, when I close my eyes, I can feel that sharp little nub poking into my eyes. It does not matter how many times I try to blink it out. That shit does not get any better. It just stays really sharp. And then I do have kind of smaller eyes. So I usually have to cut off like the first little clump. If you got to break this up like that, you can tell that they're in clumps. And so I like to take off that little bit right there if my scissors will fucking cut. And that tends to make it the perfect size. You can totally keep this and apply it to the end if you want. I don't. But if you do want an extra little bit of flair, you can just take that right there and see, Look at that. Actually, you know what? That doesn't look half bad. I'm gonna keep it on. And if you do have straighter lashes like I do, a good thing to do before you apply any makeup is to curl your lashes. I totally forgot until now. And that's gonna help the lashes kind of fuse together. If you are doing this, try not to pinch your skin because that shit hurts so bad. Oh my God, one of the most painful things I think a human can experience. Then the glue application. I always use either a black or a clear one, never one that dries white. And I usually like to use one that starts off a different color. Like this one kind 
kind of starts off as blue and then once it becomes a little less blue that's when you know you need to apply it and you don't need much glue at all but really make sure that you get it on the inner and outer corners and then while this is soaking wet you're gonna apply this directly to your eye just kidding but a lot of people think that is how you apply them you are gonna wait like a good 30 seconds I have a fan blowing right here so I'm just gonna put it in front of there I'm glad something's getting blown but now we can see it's starting to change colors we can see that it's drying so now is the perfect time to apply it we are going to put it directly on the middle of the eye set it there kind of look and get your ground make sure you're looking in a mirror and then using tweezers like always use tweezers try not to poke your eye out for god's sake but if you can use tweezers absolutely do get them as close to your natural eyelashes as possible and just kind of work it around. For me, because I'm trying to open up my eyes, I don't want the lash band to come down to my natural lash line. I kind of ended it a little bit before because now I'm gonna close my eyes and push them up so that it splays to match my wing. A lot of times I see people who don't push them up and their lashes either go like down or straight ahead and you can tell that they're wearing falsies, but when you push them up, oh my God, I forgot to put mascara on my upper lash, which isn't a big issue. But when you push them up, it really helps open your eyes. Now you can take the time to add mascara. I use usually like to do it before because then it doesn't like gum up my falsies and then for contour I don't normally stray away from what I already know so I'm just gonna go in with what I have this is the NYX Pro palette and I'm gonna use it on one of these like fan kabuki brushes and just go in all of them and a little bit of a hula bronzer oh I love bronzer so fucking much I never used to use it and then suddenly I did and I'm fucking addicted maybe one day there'll be some pop Lux bronzers we'll see I'm gonna top that off with a little bit of this covergirl chocoholic bronzer it just has a little bit of shimmer in it and it really helps give that fake ass chiseled look that all of us YouTubers love to do. And then I do have some Laura Mercier blushes that I have never tried. <gasps> Ooh, nope, that's not it. Ooh, that's pretty. But I'm really feeling kind of like a corally blush, which it looks like I do not have. So I'm just gonna go in with rosé. Oh God, blush scares me so much. Like this can totally make or break a look and I don't know how pigmented this is. So we'll see. Mm, pretty, but I think think it might be a little bit too light for me. I really do need like a coral one. But this is quite nice. Like it's not overly pigmented. So I'm not scared I'm gonna like apply too much and look like a clown because that happens a lot for me. I'm gonna top that off with this CoverGirl Peach Punch Blush. There we go. I don't know that that really changed it that much, but I still like the way it looks. Then for lipstick, I'm gonna try these Noctex Cosmetics and we'll try the shades Requiem with Rusted. I was gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick that my beautiful, fabulous makeup fairy godmother gifted me. I have not even used it yet, but I think it might be a little bit too deep. I can't tell, but so pretty. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, fuck. Mmm, it's very smooth and tastes nice. God, I just can't keep this off my teeth, huh? <laughs> so let me take the whitest, cleanest rag that I have and just dirty this shit up. I really like the way this looks and feels. I was a little bit hesitant in using this because if you remember way back when, we reviewed some fake-ass lipsticks and they came in packaging that was very similar. Like, this was a different color, but the tube was the same, and so I was like, oh god, this is gonna bring back memories, but this actually feels really, really nice and comfortable on the lips. So I'm gonna go in and highlight the middle with that lighter shade just right here. Then for highlighter, I know I've used this before. I think I got it in a boxy charm, but I don't remember using it, but she's been fingered, so I must have applied it at some point. This is the Steve Laurent Jelly Highlighter. Do I have a brush to apply this with? I know it says jelly. You're probably supposed to apply it with your fingers, but I'm not going to, so I've got it on a brush, and we'll just take this right here. <gasps> oh, that's pretty. I'm gonna take some right above the brow right there and kind of bring it in a C shape right here. Wow, I have been sleeping on this shit. I'm gonna pop a little bit of that on the inner corner too, just to give that a highlight. I feel like we're kind of dark in that area. Okay, that didn't cut it. So I'm taking some Pop Lux Pure Life and placing that on the inner corner as well. There we go. Okay, I am too curious about this lipstick. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit to the outter corners. You probably aren't even gonna be able to see it, but I just wanna try it. Oh, mm, she's so smooth. And here we are with the final look. I actually like it. Like, I don't think there's much of anything that I've been disappointed in. I really like that highlighter. I liked the blushes. I love this palette. The eyebrow gel, I don't really mind it. Like, after I went under and re-highlighted my underbrow, I think they look good. The lashes are very, very pretty. I probably could have gone with a bigger pair, but these work too. The lipsticks are super comfortable. They look great. They applied marvelously, even though my lips are peeling. Oh my 
my god. After I take this off, I am doing a lip mask, a lip scrub, and probably a lip removal. Hold on. I just remembered. We have to set our face. This is a Gerard Cosmetics setting spray in a new flavor that I have not tried. I'm sure it's been around for ages, but this is the lavender one. So let's go ahead and... Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, mm, it smells like a pillow at a fancy hotel. This BB cream. I really like this. Like my skin looks glowy, but not oily. I didn't really feel much with this super peptide by Good Molecules, but that's not to say it's not a good product. I just don't think I would apply it before makeup like I would a face oil. It did still feel good on the skin, but I'd probably use this just for skincare, not necessarily makeup. So I'm really excited to continue using their products. The Dior concealer, I don't think was a bad concealer, but I don't know that it's as good as other concealers that I have. I'm gonna have to really continue trying that out with other foundations, but with this foundation, I think it looked really, really well the more that I blended it out. And with some great hydration, I do think it probably could be as good as the backstage. You just kind of have to finesse it a little bit. Right now, I'm not super sold on it yet though. So I'll let you know if it grows on me. Hopefully it's a grower and a shower. The foundation. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just saw the color of my face versus my skin. <laughs> it's nice. How very much like me. Anyways, this foundation was very, very good. I really want to get my actual shade because even though these are supposed to be on the rosy side, I think they aren't. They're very yellow on my skin, which is odd because in my monitor, this one looks really rosy, but in person, this shit is yellow. But iffy color choice aside, it's actually a really good foundation. I think I fucking love it, especially for the price. That was like, what, 12 bucks per bottle? And if you get it at Ulta, there's always that $3.50 off coupon that you can use. So it's pretty affordable. What the fuck else did we use? Like the blushes, those were great. I did like this powder. It didn't add a ton of highlight, but I feel like it did the job. I just can't get over this palette. Like it was beautiful, but there we go. That was hella fun. Please let me know down in the comments below what kinds of videos you want me to see. Of course, I have more cooking shows on the way. They're just taking a little bit longer than I had wanted. There'll be lots more Devil's lettuce reactions on here. I know that everybody's not a fan of those, so I will try to mix things up here and there. And I do have a few more videos like this planned out where I do a full face of some kind of product, but I am always open to new ideas for you to escape reality for a little while. Just let me know. Huge thanks to everybody who's supporting me here and on Patreon. If you do want to join me on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get exclusive content as well as early access to videos with a few other perks on there. It's very cheap and very fun, just like me. But I'm sending everybody so many healthy vibes, so much love, so much positivity. And if you see somebody who's a little bit down, send them some love. You never know how much a smile or a compliment can change somebody's life. Especially now, I feel like people in the world really need that. So give virtual hugs to as many people as you possibly can. But there you go. Like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at official Lady, and you can follow me online at thepoplix.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Bye.